So today's uh, chit chat will be about a very profound subject, namely divinity. Divinity is providence. Why bother in modern days, uh, largely atheized, secularized, or at least in our uh, preconception of it, because the world by and large is uh, still very religious, despite what atheists proclaim. At least there are plenty of believers in various creeds that uh, guide the choices, the ethics, the so-called moralities and so on and so on in the modern age, albeit in a secularist form in some states. So where are gods in the modern world? If somebody believes in them, is it a blind faith? Well, some of us, especially gifted, use the argument from sight or direct experience, peak experiences, the instantiation as a most solid argument from which we derive our further purpose and our act and reasonably derive theology. But this is an argument only for the ones who directly see and experience, otherwise it is a blind faith. Somebody uh, experienced something, so a divinity or a muse or an angeli bonum daemonem, daemonus, and should we choose to believe him? Not really, because this is his right, his experience, and uh, given the rationale and mindset in the modern era, it should be discarded. We should doubt and be skeptical about it unless we experience it ourselves. This is the argument from interaction. So I may believe in gods, in muses, in uh, Angelibonum, in Daimonus, Agathos Daimonus, because I witnessed them and interact with them. Would it convince anyone else? Not really. So how to arrive at faith from a reason? There is a certain axiom taken from Porphyrius Malhus that gods don't contradict nature and vice versa. Gods won't contradict physics or mathematics or objective laws of the universe. There are subtle forces and ontologies that are inbuilt in the system and somehow co-generated. So uh, it is uh, against the blind faith. It is much better to be an agnostic or an atheist than a blind believer. And why is it so? Because it is honest and skeptical. Now divinities and theologies, reasoned the theologies, require intelligence to arrive at them philosophically and what is not understood by yourself or oneself is not incorporated into one's mind, soul and heart as a sacramentus or a mystery that is laid down on the intellect. Now a blind fated believer that believes because it was said so or according to tradition or doctrine has a slight or no chance at realizing mysteries, therefore pursuing a liberative path. Because he or she selects to follow a doctrine rather than build foundations to understand the gist of it by themselves. Now, how to derive a non-primitive theology in other ways? How to, even if we want to build and if we want to believe in gods, if, or if we believe in gods, how to order it, if we see and interact with gods, how to order it properly? This is both related to the study of ancient source texts and creating a certain hermetical world. A world that is ordered, a categorical world from which we derive every single understanding and insight of the co-arising codependent causalities here that are filled with content and wisdom that we may take forth in order to exchange the perspectives with others. So what is important is both discerning critical thought and education. If we are having none of those components, we will get lost in some New Age fringe idiocies, for example. So, and we will turn any symbol or the manifestation out of an air of a god or a goddess and turn it into a cargo cult, a delusion, a ignorance. So, there is uh, certain ideas in the Thomistic, Thomas Aquinas perspectives of aesthetics of beauty that we may seek the truth both in ugly, turpistic things and in beautiful things if they represent truth well. And how to derive what is truthful and what is not. Well, this is depending on Gnoti Sauton, knowledge of the self. This is a thing for wholly another lecture. So, what are the gods in this framework? 
These are ethereal individuated forces and in out of an air or manifestations to these seers, they give an instantiation of experience from their greater essence to lesser manifestation in the world of mortals. And thus the gods become empirical because they are felt, understood, seen. Democritus postulates that they are a swirling whirlwind of masks of individuated god force, of individuated force that assumes masks. Uh, take, for example, Joseph Campbellian masks of divinity, masks of gods and god. So there are ontological powers, that means they have an existence separate from the perception of mortals, which is extremely important. At certain level everything is intertwined as in a pluribus unum, but within the entropies there is separateness, sameness and otherness. Now, how do they come into being? Like everything else, everything has a history. Like the galaxies, like our planet, it has a history. So, the gods may be from the ascending point, from humans and animals, rectified into spiritual uh, greatnesses, or descending from the stars and other systems, generative gods. Remember, we're not talking about uh, alien races, but about subtle ontological powers and forces that are individuating itself, themselves, throughout all the potential existences, actualities in the universe. Now it is said in Jamblichus that the highest classes of gods are impassionate and objective and they are wholly not concerned with humanity at all. So why polytheism? Because it covers all areas of relatable human experience and respiritualizes it in hypostasis, divine qualities, every aspect of human life covered and the panentheistic e pluribus unum, everything is contained within the divine. Yes, you may rectify even shit into gold, even shadow souls of cockroaches have their place to have in the world. Now, multitudes versus oneness. Uh, do we as pagans select pantheons, whether we believe in Greek pantheon or Egyptian pantheon? Now, if you have a deep insight into the occult mechanics, you may walk with various traditions after deeply understanding and studying them. It's not about like in the chaos paradigm that you say this god, that god, this because you like them and, and, and then it's a mess. You need to study the traditions, go in depth and then download the initiations, the mysteries, the sacraments. And gods are not stupid forces, they're not, they're not passive. They are walking in an active manner, merging the field with the subject of their action, that is the object. If the subject of their action is a mortal mind, their idea, from, derived from their ontological existence, merges with the mind of the subject, that is a mortal. So why not monotheism? Uh, well, it cuts the chains of initiations, it cuts the relatable human experience and relates to a psychologically alien remote godhead like a blob of something that you can assign many attributes to it but it's remote, removed from your direct action, from your direct experience, perception and so on. So uh, subtle interventionists, do gods intervene? Agathos Daimonis, uh, as I witnessed they do. Uh, the change of mind, heart, soul, acquiring new skills. For example, one day you may become an excellent rhetor, the other day you may stutter, as some stutterer. One day you may acquire all of a sudden combat skills or, or skills charismata to influence others. The other time you return to normal. That reminds me of Agrippa's occult philosophy that the lower, medium and high spirits, the heavenly spirits may inspire you in order to convey something and then the pool of those skills and qualities are drawn and scribed into you for the purpose of conveying something. So if we assume that there are subtle things, what are gods made of? Is it the soul and the vehicle of the soul, the field force and rage, the intellect and support that they have? Now, just like there is a, let's say, bow plan in evolutionary devo uh, developmental evolutionary biology of certain potentiality of life emerging and evolving on Earth in the solar system, 
So I would call it the Bauplan for Intelligence Mathematics of Type and Token. So in this idea the type or the Arche, the Parmenidian Arche, are the Platonic ideas. The emerging in actuality is the token, therefore from the token we may derive the potential for non-human intellect that pre-existed, protonoic, and ontologies that are antedating their substantiation, substantiation in organic life. So throughout the evolution of animals and humans it was already there, but it acquired a mask. So why gods? Uh, metaphysics, why metaphysics, why theology, uh, why magic, why occult? A man, I think, is much better rounded a whole with metaphysics. It uh, is self-guiding, based on ethos and responsibility. Uh, a man gets more of a contentful life, full of meaning and substance, if not given to complete nihilism. So the metaphysics of ethos, there are certain rules of the universe, there is certain grammar of the universe, therefore we may derive certain ethical forms and individuate them through our current setting, whether political, societal, religious and otherwise. I am not claiming some kind of universalism, that there is some godly ethos, that there is some godly never-changing morals. No, there is a certain great force field of, let's say, metaphysics, from which we may derive things to guide ourselves, to create morality, to create ethos, to create laws, to be inspired by justice, but they are never absolute, they shouldn't be doctrinarian, because then people go on and slaughter each other based on some flawed, blind belief systems. Now, it gives a mortal stronger accentuation on developing arete, or non-relative values and virtues. It is uh, the freedom to develop heroes, to take responsibility over yourself and to be guarded and inspired by greater things. Even psychologically, if you select to believe in some uh, divinities, it makes your mind much more rounded if you have a strong basis in development. And uh, in the end, uh, there is so much more, this is a, a shortcut, just a little basis, foundation. There is so much more advanced theology of the ancients, Greeks, Romans, Kemetism, Egyptians and so on. Uh, ceremonies, elucidations, for example, uh, how come that is, is a godhead only in one place or is it everywhere? If a priestess of Hecate in Greece and in America invokes Hecate, can she be in both places at once, at the same time? When if it's a large ontological field, the masks instantiate in subjects at the same time in both places. So, um, all in all it depends on the perception of the beholder and his particular relation with divinity, how he wants to develop. But this is what I would like to leave as a microscopic prompter and a slight chance with the hope that perhaps it may help someone. So, thank you.